Hi and welcome to our new media and cultural studies video presentation done by myself, Sean, by Ashling and by Lauren. Um, Ashling will be talking about France and Lauren will be talking about Norway and myself will be talking about the intercultural relationships uh, for both. Now I'll hand you off to Ashling who will be talking about France. Okay, so the two partner universities that we've chosen are um, the EDHEC in Paris, Nice and Lille and we've chosen the Boulder University in Norway. Um, the EDHEC is one of the 20 best business schools in the world. Um, it is international and directly connected to the business world which is very good, especially for Irish students who are going over to France. Um, it's recognised for the excellence of research and ability to train entrepreneurs and managers. Um, it also produces innovative solutions recognised by a lot of companies. That's a big reason why a lot of Irish students would go over, as they can be recognised and get good jobs. Um, their way of teaching things is learning by doing. So when Irish students go to France, they'll be um, talking to French people and they'll get to know the French world a lot better. Um, this is obviously one of Limerick's current universities. Um, France uh, is in Europe, as well as Irish and its capital city is Paris. Um, it's a well-known partner of the university. Uh, it's filled with a wide range of opportunities, as I said before, like jobs and how it's learning by doing and they get to talk to French people a lot of the time. Um, also, France and Ireland are very close, so it makes it easy. Um, the, flight, the flight is like an hour and 40 minutes long, so it's not that far to travel, which makes it very appealing for students. Um, in modern life, most people would associate France with Paris. These are just some main facts about France. Um, French is the official first language, and French is also taught in lots of colleges in Ireland, which makes it easy for students to go over there as they've already been learning it up through school. Um, French cuisine and wine is very cultural and is well known to everyone who thinks about France. Um, of course, it has amazing fashion sense as well as it is like the fashion capital of the world as well. Um, it's also a major holiday destination, a lot of tourists would go there as there is a lot of culture. Um, of course when you think of France a lot of people would think of the main things like the Eiffel Tower, the flag, the wine and the food as well so it's just well known especially in Ireland. Um, does France have a high or low context culture? We've talked about this in our lectures and we think that France has a high context culture. Uh, this means that um, when you're communicating you can mostly assume things so they don't take things directly. Um, this is kind of like Ireland as well because they both have a high context culture. Um, they communicate in indirect ways so it's less spelled out than other countries such as Germany. Um, this is just a diagram, so high context culture is indirect, so there's a lot of paths you have to go through to get to it. And then of course we have just a direct, which is low context, which is just straight to the point. Um, language of course is a big thing in France. Um, it's all people use to communicate. It's a dynamic process. Um, it's constantly changing depending on the situations that you're in. Um, it's different in every culture. And culture is communication and communication is culture. Um, the context is central to communication as well as language. Uh, as France is a high context culture, it's easier for someone with a similar context culture to communicate, so there France and Ireland can communicate better. Um, low context cultures who find it difficult to communicate with high context cultures as they would prefer to be direct and don't like to use different paths as they may not understand the way they're explaining it. Um, French of course is the main language spoken throughout France. Um, the, it's an internationally accepted language for diplomacy and they have huge pride in their language. There are many French speaking nations, so of course French, if you go to France, and Irish even goes to France, they have a wide variety of places that they can work. Um, there's both verbal and non-verbal ways of communicating. So in this country, like they'll communicate differently depending on their class and their social status. Um, for example, like if you're talking formally, people will use boo, and if you're talking just to your friend, you might use two. Um, they use hand gestures, so they would use like a thumbs up or a perfect, that's kind of what they do, so that's how they communicate. Um, also, when French people receive compliments, 
they're welcome but they're usually not received well. Same as in Ireland, if someone says you're a top of mind, you might just say it's from Penny. French, French are really like that as well, so that helps them communicate better as well. And that was what I was saying here about foo, that's formal, and two is informal. So it's just, foo is the polite form, so if you're talking to someone who may be above you, you use this. And two is just kind of your friends and your family, that's what you use. Um, the norms in France, in France there are many specific ways that things are done. Um, addressing someone, there's two different ways of doing so. Um, for a close friend it's okay to salute them, whereas with someone you may not really know it's not okay. Um, if you're addressing a stranger, you should use boo and a handshake. Um, kissing in France is also the norm when you're meeting or talking to somebody, so you kiss them on the cheek, whereas that's different in Ireland, like if you were just talking to someone, you would just say hello or give them a wave or a kiss on the cheek is for France and there are certain ways you let the France person need just so you kiss them on either cheek. Um, when eating and drinking in France there are many norms, like in France their meals are a lot larger than in Ireland. Um, they have many courses and of course if you're in someone else's house there are certain ways and certain matters that have to be followed which is not really the same in Ireland. That's different even though they have the same context culture. Um, in Ireland we send cards for most occasions but in France it's not really the norm. They may send um, a card for New Year's but only to people that don't normally see through the year, that's it. Um, beliefs. In France there's been dominated influence of the Catholic Church. Um, the constitution declares to be secular country. Secularism does not reject religion but attempts to bar any single religion from being political. Um, that's it, and in Ireland obviously it is dominated by the Catholic Church and there is secularism, but they're not really the same in that sense. Um, about 8% of the population is Roman Catholic and the second largest religion in terms is Islam. 15% of the population also consider themselves to have no religion. Now, so that's me finished now talking about France and we can hand you back over to Sean and he's going to talk about the intercultural relationship between All right, um, the intercultural relations between Ireland and France. Uh, France and Ireland have a long history of relations together. Um, as part of the British Empire, Irish soldiers fought in France during World War I uh, between 1914 and 1918. Uh, Irish troops fought in the Battle of the Somme as well. In 1929, Ireland opened a diplomatic legation in Paris and approximately 50 Irish men and women joined, their, uh, joined the French resistance. Um, France and Ireland are both in Europe, obviously, and many Irish people travel to France, not only for study, but also for holidays and also for work. Um, a total of 9,664 Irish people live in France in 2013, uh, which is up 44% since 1990. There are uh, 35,000 international uh, students studying in Ireland from 161 different countries. Um, a lot of these international students are French as there is a great close relationship between Ireland and France. Um, Ireland and France have a very positive and strong relationship. Um, French people, as well as anybody, receives a cultural shock when living in a different country. Uh, one shock that might be surprising is opening hours in the shop. In France, uh, banks are open all day. And some French people get a shock when they can only use the bank between 10 and 4. Uh, yeah. uh, French people are often surprised by the kindness of Irish people. In supermarkets in Ireland, it is common for the cashier to say hello, how are you? Whereas in France, they're very like, you know, to themselves. This is not common in France, uh, therefore, another cultural difference. The typical stereotype of an Irish person can be very accurate. It says that um, the Irish love to drink. Um, there's no myth that in Ireland, Ireland is full of leprechauns and there is a pot of gold at the end of every rainbow, uh, which of course is not the case. Um, when people think of France, they picture the ultimate French person with a beret and an amazing fashion sense. Uh, French people are also perceived as being rude, which is in most cases not true, as they're just like to keep to themselves. Uh, uh, similar, similarities between ourselves and France is that like, we're both in Europe, we're both involved in the same historical events, so you know, involved in the British Empire and World War I. Um, France welcomed Irish people into our country with open arms, and Irish people are the same, welcoming French people with open arms. 
uh, both cultures or high context culture. Um, the problems Irish people may occur, French people may occur, although we both have high context culture, they may still come to the same problems. In France, English is not spoken very well, in some cases not at all. Um, this could be a problem as there could be a communi communication barrier between the two nationalities. Certain slang words and hand gestures could cause problems when commuting, communicating, as they may not be known in both cultures. Um, I'll be talking about Norway as it's a low context culture, and um, the university we chose is the Roald Dahl University in Ramsdale County. It has 3,700 students, and public education is free with an academic year of two semesters, but August is December and then January is June, very similar to Ireland. So Norway is a low context culture and unlike France they don't rely on contextual elements to communicate, they take a more direct and explicit approach and the cultural rules, rules and norms tend to be spelled out so people who are not familiar with the culture know what the expectations are. <laughs> and so in Nor Norway the language that they speak is Norwegian and Danish, Norwegian and Swedish are all very similar. So if you can speak one of them, you're more than likely to be able to understand the others. And Nairns and Danish have two genders, but unlike many other languages, they're common and neuter. Um, and Danish is, the, is also spoken in Greenland with about 20% of the population. Norway was voted the happiest place to live in 2017, and they celebrate their national day on the 17th of May. Um, Norwegians like to eat a quick lunch and then uh, have their dinner around half three. Um, unlike high context cultures like Spain or France where they usually have a long meal around five or six at night time. So a big belief of Norway is keeping calm and being punctual, they really um, value that. They also keep their work and leisure very strictly apart and unlike Ireland they don't use thank you and please as much as we do. And once they use it they're being very sincere about it. So a big belief in Norway is the Janti law, and it's all about humility and um, everyone being on equal footing. So Norwegians don't like to flaunt wealth and they don't value it, and they don't think anyone is above anyone else. So um, the high context cultures are vulnerable to communication breakdowns. Whereas low context cultures are known for their ability to tolerate or understand diversity, but they tend to be more insular. So the relationships between Norway and Ireland is there is a strong historical bond because um, obviously the Vikings originated from Scandinavia and there's a big um, influence in Ireland from the Vikings. So a stereotype for both the Norwegians and Vikings would be blonde hair and blue, um, blue eyes, whereas the stereotype of Ireland would be the ginger hair and green eyes. So the foreign relations of Norway are based on the country's membership in NATO and um, within the workings of the UN. Uh, Norway actually entered the EU but they are a member of the European Economic Area so that's how they communicate with other European countries. And diplomatic relations between Ireland and Norway were established in 1950. That's it. That's it.